Well, hello, my YouTube fellas and gals. So today we are on lot 21. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Team at Own a Used Bookstore, or you can use my channel as a resource center to find books on your tech gadgets. But if you buy from me, I will post them in my Etsy and I will ship media mail so that you can come and get them. You just email me at Tammy's Makeup Treats at gmail.com or Mendes Bookstore and more on Facebook. Everything will be in the description below. So with that, we have book number one. This is The Devaney Brothers, Michael and Patrick by Cheryl Woods. This is a 2014 copyright. And this is what the book's about. For years, Kelly Andrews has awaited for her big brother's best friend to notice her as the physical therapist assigned to his recovery. She's finally getting the chance. But Navy Steel Michael Devaney is broken in body and spirit. And all he sees is is himself as half a man. He's sure he'll never want, he'll never be enough for the beautiful, beautiful, vibrant Kelly. Can Kelly convince him that he's all the man she would ever need? Patrick's destiny, devastated by the discovery of a terrible family secret, Patrick Devaney has shut out the world. But enchanting garden kindergarten teacher. Alice Newberry sees the hurt in his eyes and is determined to help Patrick find peace. She knows it will take a lesson in love and forgiveness to coax the brooding fisherman out of hiding. Soon Patrick begins to hope, but before he can truly claim Alice as his own, he has to face the greatest challenge of his life, his past. So there's book number one. Book number two we have Home to Sea View Key by Cheryl Woods. This is a 2014 copyright, and this is what this book's about. Falling for a handsome stranger on the very morning they meet is hardly what recently divorced Abby Miller planned for her return to Sea View Key. Hoping to mend an old friendship and to give back to the community she loves, Abby's definitely not looking for love. For ex-soldier Seth Laundry, Seaview Key seems like the perfect place to heal a broken heart eventually. And when he rescues a beautiful woman on the beach, his nightmares about the past are eclipsed by daydreams about the future. Neither Abby nor Seth is looking for forever, but powerful love has its own timetable, and taking a chance on the future will test their courage in ways neither of them could possibly have anticipated. So there's book two. Book number three, we have Treasured by Cheryl Woods, and this is a 2007 copyright, and this is what the book is about. Despite the wealth and power of his remarkable family, Ben Carlton stayed hidden away in rural Virginia with only his artistic talent and his troubled memories for company. But when he met beautiful gallery owner Kathleen Dugan at the urging of his matchmaking, and destiny, his wounded heart began to open, yet he couldn't completely forget the tragedies of his past. Vivacious, driven Kathleen was intrigued not only by Ben's paintings, but also by the handsome, mysterious man who created them. Were Ben's wounds too deep for Kathleen to mend, or did destiny create another perfect match? So that is book three. Book number four we have Miss Liz's Passions by Cheryl Woods. This is a 2011 copyright, and this is what the book is about. Can't she learn to love again? Elizabeth Gentry put all her passion into her students, educating them, encouraging them, reaching them. That was easy. It was the living that was hard after the betrayal and the grief and the pain. There was a kind of peace in giving away her heart to her pupils. That was what made Todd Lewis so dangerous. With his dog determination, rugged handsomeness, he had slowly staked his own claim on her heart and made her feel again, made her want to hope and dream. But her hopes and dream, her dreams, her heart were so fragile. Could she entrust them to him or would he destroy them for good? So that is book four. Book number five, we have A Love Beyond Words by Cheryl Woods. And this is a 2016 copyright. This is what it's about. After a devastating hurricane, Miami firefighter Rick Wilder rescues a dozen of devastated people from the wreckage of their homes, including Ewing Matthews. The beautiful stranger 
has no place to go. And Rick, Ricky insists she stay with him, but the notoriously committed, shy Ricky has never let a woman invade his life, and he's starting to like having Allie with him far too much. Cautious Allie is astonished at Rick's generosity, but she's wary of leaning too much on his broad shoulders. She's always prided herself on being independent, and Ricky seems determined to court danger. Can she risk caring for someone who insists on living his life on the edge? That's book five. Book number six, we have Beach Lane by Cheryl Woods. This is a 2011 a copyright, and this is what the book is about. In the close-knit community of Chesapeake Shores, Maryland, Susie O'Brien and Mac Franklin's not dating claim befuddles everyone, especially since the two spend every spare minute together. Susie's thrilled when their friendship finally heats up, that just when happily ever after seems within reach, Mac loses the job he loves as Susie faces a devastating diagnosis, but O'Brien's always unite in a crisis. Even her cousin Jess, Susie's rival for most of their lives, becomes her staunchest supporter, especially when Mac's former lover comes to town. The stakes are higher than ever before, but Susie's definitely up to the challenge, as long as Mac's right there by her side. So that is book six. Book number seven... And no, they're not all Cheryl Woods. <laughs> Just most of them. It is Sand Castle Bay by Cheryl Woods. It's a 2013 copyright. And this is what the book's about. In a trade-off she's lived to regret, Emily Castle left home years ago to become an interior designer. The youngest of three sisters, Emily desperately wanted to prove herself success, though came at the cost of leaving behind the man she loved. For Boone Dorset, losing Emily left her heart shattered. But another woman was waiting in the wings. Now a widower with a young son, Boone has a second chance with Emily when a storm brings her home. But with his former in-laws threatening a custody suit, the stakes of loving her are higher than ever. Will fate once again separate them, or is the time finally right for these two star-crossed lovers? So there you go. Book 7. Book number eight, we change. <laughs> we have Chasing Destiny by Nora Roberts. This is a 2016 copyright. And this is what the book is about. Waiting for Nick. Federica Kimball is ready for life on her own in New York. She has three goals. Find her own place, become a Broadway lyricist, and get Nick Lebrick to fall as desperately in love with her as she has always been with him. Though Nick has always treated Freddie like a little sister, he can't help but notice the strong passion and head-to-toe gorgeous woman now standing in her place. Fight as he might, Nick suddenly finds his feelings for Freddie are anything but brotherly. Considering Kate, Kate Stanislavski Kimball has turned her back on glamour and fate and has come home to make a fresh start. The only thing more perfect than the beautiful, dilapidated building she's bought for her new dance school is Brody O'Connell, the frustrating and surprisingly fascinating contractor she's hired for the renovation. Brody's determined to resist Kate's effortless allure. She's Natasha St St Stanis Stanislavski's, I think, I guess how you say that last name, pampered perfect daughter after all, but how long can a man hold out against his own heart? So there's Nora Roberts at number eight. Book number nine, we have Reflections and Dreams by Nora Roberts. And this is a 2001 copyright. And I don't know if I told you this, all these books are a dollar a piece. That's all these are today for these softbacks. Nora Roberts brings you two tales, two tantalizing tales of remarkable women who live and love on their own terms. So there's two in stories in this book. From Considering Kate, part of her heart work, heartwarming Stanislavski saga. Reflections is a lifetime pursuing her dreams had left Lindsay Dune little time for romance, but seductive Beth ben Bannon is about to give the inexperienced beauty a crash course in the art of love. Dance of Dreams is innocent Ruth Bannon is an awesome, in awe of her demeaning mercurial mentor, Nikolai Davidov, 
But when their partnership erupts into a passionate desire, it's up to Ruth to, to teach the guarded Davida the tender dance of love. So there you go, book nine. It's either Davido or Davido. I don't know. These names are funky. <laughs> the next, Always by Nora Roberts. This is a 2011 copyright. And let's see where her synopsis is. The historical hotel in Boonesboro has endured war and peace, the changing of hands, and even rumored hauntings. Now it's getting a major facelift from the Montgomery brothers and their eccentric mother. As the architect of the family, Beckett has little more for a social life, but there's another project he's got his eye on, the girl he's been waiting to kiss since he was 16. After losing her husband and returning to her hometown, Claire Brewster soon settles into her life as the mother of three young sons while running the town's bookstore. Though busy, Claire is drawn across the street by Beckett's transformation of the old inn, wanting to take a closer look at both the building and the man behind it. With the grand opening inching closer, Beckett is happy to give Claire a private tour. It's no first date, but these stolen moments are the beginning of something that could arouse the secret yearning that resides in Claire's independent heart and open the door to the extraordinary adventure of what comes next. So there you go. All 10 books. And you get a hold of me, how you do in the description below. And with that being said, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. Come say hi to me in my comment sections, even if you don't order books. And I'll see you soon. Bye.